Hi! In this video, we're going to see how we can use functions and parameters in our Arduino programs to make them more versatile. Let's get started. A function is a way to create a new word that the computer will understand. We list a set of commands and give the function a name, and every time we call that name in our program, the computer will run the commands we have set. We have already been defining functions in our programs without even knowing it. When we add commands to setup and loop, we are using functions. To define a function, we use this syntax. It is possibly a bit different than what you're used to, so let's explore it a bit. The one thing that's different in C++ from many other languages is the first keyword we use to define a function. In JavaScript, we use the word function. In Python, we use the word def. But in C++ and with Arduino, we will use a different keyword based on the type of value we want our function to return. You'll note that our setup and loop functions use the keyword void before the function name. This is because these functions are not returning any values to be used in another part of our program. In this course, we're only going to need to use one of four different keywords here. We use the keyword void if our function will not return anything. We use the keyword int if our function will return an integer value. We use the keyword float if our function will return a decimal value. And we use the keyword bool if our function will return a boolean value, true or false. Next, we write the name of the function, adhering to the same naming rules we learned for variables. We then write any parameters needed inside the parentheses. If we don't need any parameters, the parentheses can remain empty. Indented inside a set of curly braces, we write all of the commands we want to be performed when we call this function. Then, to call the function anywhere in our code, we simply write the function name followed by a set of parentheses. Any arguments for the needed parameters can be included here as well. Don't forget the semicolon. Let's look at an example. Assume that we have assigned our variables and added information to our setup function at the beginning of the code. At the bottom of this program, we are defining a function called moveLED. This function is turning off any LEDs that were previously lit and lighting the one we want based on the LED value variable, which changes its value based on which button is pressed. No parameters are being used, so the parentheses are empty. Lines 13 to 17 are commands that live inside this function. There are two places we are calling the function inside our program once inside each if statement. So when this program runs, each time the left button is pressed, the lit LED moves to the left because the variable LED value has been decreased by one before we call the move LED function. When the right button is pressed, it moves to the right after the LED variable is increased by one and the move LED function is called. If we want to include parameters in our functions, we need to write them in a specific way that is a bit different than you may have previously seen. We first write the type of our parameter value, similar to how we introduce variables. In this class, we'll stick to using these three types, int, float, and bool. Then we write the name of our parameter using our naming rules. For example, if we wanted to use a parameter inside our move LED function, we write the type, in this case, int, followed by the parameter name, in this case, brightness. Let's look at an example. If we wanted to change our previous program to make the outside LEDs less bright when they are lit than the middle LED, we can make these alterations and use parameters. When a button is pressed, we are first calling the set LED brightness function. You'll see that this function does not take any parameters, but uses the LED variable to call the set LED brightness function using different values as arguments. The move LED function takes one parameter that is used inside the function to control the brightness of the LED being lit. This function is being called with different parameter values from the set LED brightness function. We can call functions inside other functions. So when this program runs, the output is an LED that is moving based on button clicks and changing brightness depending on the location. During your next exploration, you'll be using two new sensors. The first is a photoresistor, which decreases resistance with respect to the luminosity received on the sensitive surface of the component, 
which means we can use this sensor to measure the amount of light in an environment. The sensor can be connected to your circuit in either direction. The second sensor we'll be using is a thermistor. A thermistor is a resistor whose resistance is dependent on the temperature, hence the name. There are many different types of thermistors, but we'll be using one that looks like this. Thermistors are very fragile, so be careful when connecting them to your breadboard, though they can be connected in either direction. One thing to note is that this sensor is not available in Tinkercad, so we cannot simulate the functionality on our computer. In this lesson, we learned how to use functions with and without parameters inside our programs. Now it's your turn to give it a try.